Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and today I'm going to show you how to add limbs to a softie using button joints so that they can move really easily. So here's what you need. I've got my body. I've got my legs. We're going to attach the legs to either side of this little elephant. I've got a long needle. This is a doll needle. It's five inches long. And I've got a long piece of thread on it. I'm using embroidery thread here, two strands of embroidery thread. This isn't something that's really going to be played with by a little kid, so I'm not as worried about strength. If this was for a teddy bear that I was going to give a child that was going to be dragged all over the place, I would use embroidery thread, I mean upholstery thread or a um, hand or a machine quilting thread, which is a little bit stronger than all purpose thread. But for this more decorative stuffed animal, um, it's really all about the color. So I've got a long piece of thread in here, no knot, and I've got a couple of small buttons. These buttons are going to help the joint be strong, and I'll show you um, how, that, how that helps it. Also, I used Thread Heaven on this thread, especially because it is embroidery thread and not um, an upholstery or a quilting thread. This just makes it a little bit stronger. It conditions it. And it also lubricates it so it doesn't tend to knot up, which is nice when you're working with a really long cut of thread like this. So you start out with the body, not with the outside of the leg. So we kind of start in the middle. I've got a little dot here. I'm actually not going to go in that dot. I'm going to go in just to the side of that dot. It's important not to go in above or below the dot because the two dots are going to help that I've got on either side of the body are going to make my legs exactly the same height. I don't want one leg to end up shorter than the other because it's higher up on the body. So I go in just to the side of that dot and on the other side of the body I'm going to come out just to the side of the dot. Okay, so I've got my long needle there. It'll easily go through the body and all the legs. Now I'm going to go into one of the legs and I'm going to come out just to the side of the dot I have on the outside of the leg. And then I'm going to stack one more thing on this. This is, gets really kind of wonky. Until you get it all put together, it all feels very wobbly. But I'm going to put my button in one side. And now I'm going to pull this thread through and I'm going to leave a good long tail hanging off. This is a good six inches. You can even leave a little bit more. Again, no knot. Now I'm going to just turn this around so that you can see a little bit what I'm doing. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go in reverse. I'm going to go in the other hole of my button and I'm going to go just on the other side of that little dot. So now the button is going to cover up the dot. And I'm going to come out on the other side of the leg and I'm going to go in to the body on the other side of that dot that I made there. My thread, I'm just going to pull my thread there so I don't have it lumpy. Now I'm going to come out on the other side of my dot and I'm going to stack the leg on this side and I'm just going to leave this tail hanging out between the leg and the body. So I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to come out just to one side of my dot on this leg and I'm going to add a button to that mix. So we've got button, leg, body, leg, button. Pull that through, take up all the slack, but don't worry about pulling it very tight. Just take up as much of the slack as you can. And remember I've still got that tail sticking out between the body and the leg. Now, I've gone through this side of the body both ways once, and this side I'm just coming out. What I'm going to do is go pass back through here and back out and come out. And what I want to do is make sure that I've got two strands of thread on each of these buttons. So, we're going in the button here. So this is the first pass through this button. Sorry, and then I go follow that track of that thread and get this thread out of the way. Back out into the leg and out where the button is. 
I'm going to pull all that through. So now, when I go back through here, that's going to be the second stitch on this button. I still have just one stitch on the button on the other side. So I'm going to go back in through my button, come out the same spot on the leg, go back into the same spot in the body, come out on this side, back through the leg, and out at the button. Okay, now I'm going to pull that tight. Not tight, but I'm going to pull up the slack. Okay, this side of the body is done because I've stitched through that button twice. This side of the body, I've only stitched through that button one time. So now I'm going to do the second stitch through that button, and instead of going all the way back through the body, I'm going to come out between this leg and this, uh, this side of the body where my thread tail is. So I'm going to flip him over again so I can see what I'm doing. And I go in through the button, into the leg, and out in between the leg and the body. And I pull that up. Now, I do want to pull sort of tight. You don't want to pull so tight that it makes the legs splay out. So you just need to kind of keep an eye on how the body looks. You want it to be tight enough that it's all going to be held together so that when you turn the joints, they tend to stay turned, but you don't want it to deform the, the little guy. So I'm going to pull on both of my threads here. Make sure I've got... And I'm actually going to start the first part of a knot. So you can see that that's pulling everything up together. You can see that it's dimpling in my button on that side and my button on this side. And I'm just going to test. Yep, it doesn't flop back down when I flip it up. So now I'm going to tie my other end of the knot, tie the other half of the knot. You want to do a square knot here. And then I'm going to do one more. Just to be on the secure side. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to test it. Let me stand them up. And those feel secure and I can make the little guy sit. And I can make him stand up. He'll take a little balancing, but he'll stand without help because he's got nice flat bottoms. So now all we need to do is take care of the thread tails, and that's the last step. So I've already got one thread tail threaded on my needle. So I'm just going to insert it into the body right near where the knot is and come out anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Make sure you're not wrapping your thread around anything. And then just grab a pair of scissors, give it a little tug so that it is cinched up there and when you snip it that releases the tension and it'll disappear right back in there and then just need to do the same thing with this other tail but I'll have to thread it so you just thread your tail and do the same exact thing go into the body right near where the knot is come out anywhere Pull it up so there's a little tension on it, snip it, and that thread tail disappears. And now the knot is completely hidden between the leg and the body. The reason we put the buttons on there is you could do this joint, this sew the joint the exact same way without a button in there, and that's fine. People have been doing that for centuries. But what happens over time is that that thread will actually cut through the fabric behind it and it felt like this is even more susceptible to that because the fibers aren't woven together they're really just matted together and that can the thread can actually cut through the fabric and then the leg will fall off so by putting a button in there where you have that hard surface between the thread and the the fiber um, the fabric of the body it eliminates that that cut through that can happen 
So that's it. Using button joints allows you to make softies that are more poseable, and that's a lot of fun, and they're really easy to do. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.